Hello everyone. So we're gonna quickly talk about the law of conservation of mass, which you've probably heard about before, but just as a review, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of chemicals before a reaction occurs has to be equal to the mass after the reaction has happened. Or another way of stating the law of conservation of mass is to say that atoms can't be created or destroyed. So by the end of this video, you're going to need to be able to use this idea to find a missing mass in a chemical reaction. Before we get to that point though, uh, I want to talk about a couple more vocabulary words and do some modeling with the law of conservation of mass. So a couple words you need to know are system and surroundings. And in science in general, these are very, very common terms. Um, whenever we're talking about a system, we're talking about the thing that we are studying. And often in chemistry, we are studying reactions. So for this particular section, the system is going to be whatever things are reacting. And then the surroundings is going to be everything else. So all of the things outside the reaction. Now, there are two types of systems that we could have with a reaction. We could have a closed system or we could have an open system. So let's draw some sketches to understand the difference between these. So a closed system might be something like this. Let's say this is a glass tank and it's got a lid, so it's entirely enclosed. And let's say we're doing a reaction. Let's do a simple one. Let's say we're reacting vinegar and, whoa, let's spell this right, vinegar and baking soda. And hopefully you know what happens when you react vinegar and baking soda, a gas is created. Let's say that we weigh the vinegar and the baking soda before the reaction happens and the mass is 17 grams. And then let's say we have the reaction and afterward, the reaction has happened, some CO2, some carbon dioxide has been released. We get the mass again, and it's still 17 grams. Even though carbon dioxide was released, it stayed in the container uh, because the container is a closed system. And so the mass is the same. So we can really, really easily see, yeah, this is following the law of conservation of mass because the gas stays in the container. Now let's do the same thing, but with an open system. So we're gonna do the same vinegar and baking soda reaction uh, let's say here's our water, here's our baking soda, still 17 grams, we'll label this. And then let's say we go through our reaction and carbon dioxide is produced. And then we get the mass afterward, and this time the mass is 16.7 grams. So was the law of conservation of mass followed? And the answer is yes, even though this mass is lower. The reason that this mass is lower is that some of the gas escaped to the surroundings. So the gas escapes to the surroundings but the situation still obeys the law 
of conservation of mass. Okay, so now let's do an example where we're using the idea of the law of conservation of mass to find a missing mass. So this says 3.2 grams of methane reacts with 12.8 grams of oxygen to form 8.8 grams of carbon dioxide and some water. And we wanna know what mass of water was produced. So let's write this out. Let's write out a reaction that represents what's going on here. I'm just gonna write it out in words. I'm not gonna worry about symbols for everything. Um, for oxygen, you could write O2 or you can just write oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. And they gave us masses for most of these. The methane is 3.2, the oxygen is 12.8, the carbon dioxide is 8.8, and we do not know the mass of the water. So we can use the idea of the law of conservation of mass here because the methane and the oxygen are our only reactants. So if we add those two masses together, we're gonna to get the total mass of all of the reactants, which ends up being 16. Now, according to the law of conservation of mass, the mass of the products also has to add up to 16. So basically 8.8 .8 plus whatever the mass of the water is has to equal 16. So to find the mass of the water, all we need to do is do 16 minus 8.8, .8, which would give us 7.2 grams for the mass of the water. So that's how we can use the idea of the law of conservation of mass to solve problems like this.